Right, the title for what I want to share is called What Fragrance? With a question, what fragrance? And I want to read from Daniel chapter 3, verse, beginning with verse 8. <clears throat> and I'm going to read down pretty far because I want to get to a certain point uh, in relationship to our subject today. By the way, hi everybody. Love you guys. Glad to, glad to be here with you. Okay, Daniel 3, 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship, worshipeth, uh, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Uh, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, uh, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Um, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded that the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the fiery, the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I guess they like these guys because they keep calling them by name, um, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then, Sha then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the, uh, of the midst of the fire, and the princes and governors and captains and the king's counselor being gathered together saw these men who, upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, uh, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. And uh, I want to read just one little phrase there from another translation. It says, When the three Hebrew children came out of the fiery furnace, there was not even the smell of smoke on them. There was not even the smell of smoke on them. So, uh, the question that I want to ask is, what fragrance, what fragrance is detected on you? Um, is it the smell of smoke? 
or is it the fragrance of Christ? And that's what we want to discuss right now. There are some people who, they're really not declaring the sufferings of Christ. They're not declaring the death of Christ. They're declaring their own sufferings. And, and that's what I'm referring to as the smoke. They're, uh, remember, it says when they came out of the fire, there was not even the smell of smoke upon them. And, um, and the people that are doing that are declaring their sufferings and calling it the sufferings of Christ. They want people to smell their garments here. You know, smell that. Smell their garments and see how much they've gone through and uh, understand how much that they've suffered for God and for others. And uh, in truth, the suffering is not about Jesus and his suffering. The suffering is about their sufferings for Jesus or for someone else. And um, so uh, we should, you know, in truth, we should only want the fragrance of Christ, that sweet savor of Christ coming from us so that when people get around us, they smell him, they sense him, they sense beauty, not smoke and, and uh, uh, the smell of our, what we went through. Um, so that it's meant to be the savor of the Lamb's life within us, the savor of the Lamb and what He went through, not what we went through. And so, uh, you know, we, when, we, when we have this, the smell of smoke, and because we passed through something that was, you know, uh, put us into the fire and whatever, um, then our test, it's our test, our testimony. It's, this is our testimony. I want to give my testimony of what I've given up or what I've lost or um, what I have been hurt over. You know, what has hurt me? And so it's, they start talking and, you know, it's supposed to be a, a testimony of Jesus and it's a testimony of them. It's a, not even a testimony of the victory, but of the hurt. And it's just the smell of smoke and the smell of the fire on them instead of the fragrance of Christ as they begin to share and they begin to talk and begin to tell of their experiences. Philippians 3.10, um, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. I'll read it. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. Know that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, there's no mention of us in there other than conforming to that, other than to, but it's all his and him. And it's, and it's all about knowing him, not about going through horrible stuff and then having, you know, being able to tell everybody how much we suffered for Jesus or for others, you know, for ungrateful people. It's, it's his death. It's his sufferings. It's his experience. And it's, and it's meant to be something in the midst of that, in the midst of that, that we know him. And kind of we get that picture with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because another one appears there and the king sees someone else and the counselor sees someone else and it's one like as unto the Son of God and they are affected by that and th they know something eternal is going on here instead of just, you know, well, God spared us, but we're, we suffered and we, you know, and it was, it was really hard on us. And so when I hear people talk sometimes, I realize that they're not talking about the sufferings of Christ. They have taken it personally. What they're going through, they take it personally. You want to know how I, I can tell that they've taken it personally? Uh, because several things. Number one, they remember what they went through. Number two, they are still hurt over it. Number three, they still talk to others about it. And number four, 
They still are speaking evil of people that put them through that. That's that. That's all personal stuff. That's all. This wasn't the sufferings of Christ. This wasn't entering into his sufferings. This wasn't entering into his death. This wasn't being conformable to his death. Jesus' death, when Jesus died on the cross, while he's doing it, he's not cursing everybody for doing it or talking about how bad this is and why did y'all do this to me or any of that stuff. Not during it, not afterwards. He didn't show up in the resurrection with a vile, unresurrected spirit talking about how mean everybody was to him and how unfair this was and how wrong this was. And I am just, I just suffered for the Father and, you know, woe is me. That's the smell of smoke. That's, the, that's having that smell of smoke still on your garments and everybody has to smell it. Here, smell this. They put me through the fire. They put me, you know, you know, you remember the scripture Peter talks about. He says, think it not strange. We think it's strange all the time. But he says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is there to test you. Okay, so we go, well, I was tested and I'm still a Christian. He's not testing you to see if you're still a Christian. He's testing you whether it's Christ in you, whether, whether this is his sufferings or yours. He's testing you whether this is Christ Jesus' death or is it our death? Is it, is it about us or is it about him? Is it about the joy? You remember the disciples. They went, they, the, the uh, Sanhedrin called them in and beat them and all this kind of stuff and said, don't speak in his name anymore. And they went out rejoicing and was glad that they got to suffer for Christ in, in, in oneness with the one who had just died and lost everything. That they could be in that spirit. See, the, the thing is, the thing about going through his sufferings isn't that we went through something horrible. The thing is, is that it was Christ that carried us through that. Yea, though I walk, though I walk through the valley of Shadow, I don't fear any, I don't fear it because you're with me. It's really you leading me into that as a shepherd. I'm just a sheep following you into what you went into, into the cross, into the death, into the crucifixion. That, that sort of thing. So um, in Titus chapter 3, verse 2, it says, To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. All meekness unto all men. Gentle. Okay, so, um, so the fragrance of Christ is this. It doesn't have, if, if somebody was the tool who, who was used to put you through that, um, be gentle to them. Don't speak evil of, speak evil of no man. Um, be showing all meekness to all men. It's the lamb when you go through it and you bless those who curse you. When you pray for those who despitefully use you. It's us when you still have the fragrance, uh, the, the smell of smoke on you. That's when it's personal. It's not him. It's not even about him. Really, it's about us. We've made his cross about our sufferings instead of what he went through. So, um, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, some verses we're very familiar with. Always, always, always bearing about in the body, always, us bearing it in the body, but, but what? The dying of the Lord Jesus, not our dying. Not our smoke, not our fire, not our furnace. The dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of the Lord Jesus may be made manifest in my mortal body. See, we're not uh, we're not bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus when we're. When, when everyone smells the smoke on us, we're bearing about in our bodies our own suffering and calling it 
fellowshipping. Get, come on, listen to this. I just fellowship with Jesus in it while I curse men. Okay, that's totally not his death, not his sufferings. Turn the other cheek. Okay, well, so we turn the other cheek and then we curse him twice as much. All right, so, um, so in that, we're supposed to be the vessel, not the object. Not the object not the object of, of this. Christ is the object. Jesus is the object. Jesus is the lamb. We're not lambs. We're goats. But we've been given precious lamb life within us. And so um, when, we, when we're doing that, when we're coming out of that fiery furnace with smoke and complaints and, you know, doing that, we've relieved Jesus of his sufferings. We've made him our own. We've relieved him of that, and we've taken it out of the realm of the eternal. There's no, here's my opinion, there's no point in going through that if we're not going to, if it doesn't bring Jesus glory. If it's just going to be about our suffering and, you know, that, our trials, uh, and make everybody smell that, then what's the point of doing that? And when we do that, when we, when we make it about us in that way, then we become martyrs instead of vessels of the Lamb. Okay, and that may sound like a small statement, but it's huge. It's huge. It's huge because we've robbed him of being the Lamb in his body, being the life that lives in his body, which is Lamb life. And we have become martyrs, which it never tells you that except in relationship to the Lamb's life in us. And so, you know, so it's like I... I like being hurt because I can talk about it. I like people mistreating me because I can, I can sh let people smell the smoke on my garments and, you know, talk about, you know, my loss and, you know, how much, it, you know, it hurt me and the cost that this thing cost me and how cruel were those people who mistreated me. And I want to just tell everybody about it so that they can see how much Jesus I have. <laughs> All right, I need to get going here. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now thanks be unto God, which causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge in us, or by us, in every place. So it's referring to God causing us to triumph and making manifest his savor, the knowledge of him, and to do that in our trials. This is what it's talking about, to do this in our trials Every place we go, uh, knowledge by us in every place. And then ver the next verse, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. So this is saying it's referring to the fragrance of Christ coming out of us and it's unto God and it has an effect on others. And this is the next verse, verse 16. What is that effect? To the one we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Okay, so this verse is referring to the effect on those that are perishing. It's death unto death. They see only death and no life. They're, they, they're in the fiery furnace. They're getting burned. They're getting smoke on them. That's all it is to them. They don't, there is no fragrance of life unto life of Christ. And so then it also mentions that, that for those that are saved, it is life under life. They see the death as a selfless life. They see that as a, they love and they embrace Jesus. And they see this, circum, this situation as, a, as a, 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 a life unto life type situation. So I began with this. What fragrance is detected on you? What fragrance is detected on you by others? Is it the smell of smoke? Or is it the fragrance of Christ? Love you guys. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your heart to point us to Jesus, to ever, 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 ever point us to Jesus and away from ourselves, especially away from our self-righteousness or our self-pity, so that there be no self-glory in your presence, and so that we will be vessels of honor that are releasing forth the fragrance of Christ to whom be all glory in the church without end. 
Amen. Thank you, guys. Love you. Be blessed. Amen.